All right, Maddie. Maddie, uh, where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? Uh, I'm from Philadelphia. Philly. And uh, tell me about your family. Um, How'd you grow up? I grew up uh, more in the like suburbs of Philadelphia. So I actually, I feel like I had a very like, I was a very, like I was a very good, very well behaved kid. Like I went to school and came home and did my homework and just lived with, lived with my mom and my sister. And that was just us gals. Normal childhood? Yeah. I mean, yes, yeah, as, as normal as, <laughs> as normal as it can be. Yeah. No, no crazy abuse or anything like that. Um, hmm. Well, it depends what you mean by like crazy abuse, but yeah, like, there was I mean, like, no. on the uh, on the other side of my family, there was very significant emotional abuse, emotional. like men mental and emotional abuse. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of trying to extract ourselves from that. But uh, from your father's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of girl were you in high school? Hmm? What kind of girl were you in high school? Um. I think I was sort of in like, in kind of like a middle crowd where like, there was sort of the, like the jock crowd that, you know, was a little like, you know, more party or popular or whatever that means. Um, but I, I had really wonderful friends and a wonderful group of friends in, in high school. And um, my school was kindergarten through 12th grade. So a lot of them I knew from kindergarten through through 12th grade so it was we like all grew up together and um and three of them are still um my closest girlfriends in the entire world so it's very lucky in that in that respect yeah that's nice and uh you went to college or, or i did yeah yeah what did you want to do um i was a i went to college out here actually so am i allowed to say where sure um yeah i went to usc um and I majored in psychology and um, gender studies, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm gay and have mental illness. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, it, it was great. And um, I, it gave me a lot of different types of career paths and career options, which is wonderful. But what I ended up um, gravitating towards was um, like psychology and media and psychology and sexuality. And so I uh, ended up in working in entertainment. So cool. Yeah. So you're you're in a unique relationship. I am. Yeah. Where you are the sub mm -hmm. to someone who is a dom. Yes. T tell me about that. How, how did that come about? Huh. Um, it was a for me, it was a very interesting really hate to use the word journey, but um, I never had a, any issue with my sexuality insofar as, you know, being queer, bisexual, little while, a lesbian, retired lesbian now. <laughs> um, I, you know, that was never an issue for me. Um, and it was always something that I felt very peaceful about. Um, but something that I, realized in, I think I realized in college, um, but I didn't really have the education, vocabulary, communication for it, even for myself, let alone for partners, um, was that I'm wired as non-monogamous. I'm wired as um, gravitating more towards kink dynamics and kink type relationships. Um, and that I think was those two parts of my I think that, you know, some people choose it as a lifestyle and others very much identify it as part of their wiring. It's part of their sexuality. It's part of their identity. And for me, that's very much the case. Um, it's just how I'm wired. And so I, I think I was, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was very afraid of that. And I, I shut that down for a really long time, um, about 10 years. And what I didn't realize about trying to shut one thing down about yourself is that eventually you start shutting everything down about yourself. And so I, um, maybe two years ago, I think I was just in a place where I couldn't figure it out. 
my therapist couldn't figure it out, you know, like why I felt like I, I didn't exist. And I felt, I felt like I wasn't a, I wasn't a person. And it was, it ended up being because I wasn't allowing myself to be a person. And I wasn't allowing myself to be everything that I am. And there was one day, it was, I, I have no idea where I was. I have no idea what I was doing. But there was one day where everything, where I woke up and everything, I felt like I was hit by a truck. And I, I woke up to everything that I had been shutting out for years. And I knew very clearly what I wanted and what I needed and that what was lacking from my life and my identity and what was like who I really was. And that led me to, um, to more kink and non-monogamy spaces. Um, I got on, I made a FetLife account just to sort of figure out what was going on with me um, and make some, you know, just connect with some people. And I found some amazing friends on there who are still some of my closest, closest friends. And we were able to talk about all the ways that kink is an enhancement to every area of your life, not just, you're not just, you know, exploring or, you know, some people do, but for me, it's not just, oh, I'm exploring in, you know, a bedroom or a dungeon or something like that. It, it's across all areas of my life that it's very important and part of my identity um, and extremely important for my mental health. I mean, it's helped, it's helped my mental health and my self-image more than anything, anything ever. Um, and through, through FetLife, I was able to explore who I was and talk to other people and sort of find commonalities or just learn different things. And um, I've met really, really incredible people on there, including um, my Dom, who I've been with for uh, just over a year and a half. So you're a submissive. Yes. How did that, how do you think that came about? I mean, was there something in your childhood? Was it something just genetic that you're wired this way? <laughs> um, I, both. I think both. I think it's absolutely, I'm very genetically wired that way. Um, but I make some jokes with my friends that, you know, do you, do you have a good relationship with both of your parents or do you have a praise kink now? <laughs> so uh, very much that. Um, and I got this sort of the cosmic double whammy of being both a Capricorn and the oldest daughter uh, or the oldest sibling. And so... Um, there was very much a stoicism that I had to maintain and a strength that I had to maintain. And there were a lot of walls that I had to keep up just to get through it and sort of be the strength of my little family where I felt that others couldn't quite hold us up. And so being a submissive has allowed me to let those down and to let in um, a certain type of care that I think I was very afraid to accept from anybody else um, before now. And it's, it's a lot easier to accept care in a, for me, it, there's, it's a lot easier to accept care within a dynamic because I think outside of it, maybe you feel, maybe people feel some guilt or, you know, oh, I should be reciprocating right now, or I should be doing something for you right now. And within a dynamic, that's inherently part of it because as a submissive, that's my role is to accept the care from my Dom. And that is his role. He has chosen his role. That is something that he wants to give. So I don't have to do, you know, I don't have to reciprocate or I don't have to perform in a way that I feel is, you know, 
I guess, re like reciprocal or owed because it's inherently part of it. When you, that when he is, when you say care mm -hmm. from your dom, what does that look like? Um, for me, and it can mean very different things for different people, but for me, um, it can be anything from Uh, I mean, first and foremost, praise kink. Hi. <laughs> so I will I will accept all of the praise all the time. It's very difficult for me to let in, but I will uh, <laughs> I will accept it. And there's a there's something that happens in my brain when I'm told that I'm a good girl, and that just sort of settles me. So I accept that, and then also. From, so from that side of things, and then also one of my main kinks, I guess you could call it, or areas of <laughs> therapeutic areas really is impact play. And so that feels caring to me, being, being gifted that from him. So, and, and this, we've, is, this is like being hit, being spanked, being... Mm -hmm. Um, started out with, uh, being spanked and then we've moved into, um, using different, different tools or toys or, um, things like that. So <laughs> the, the first that comes to mind because I hate, love it so much is like, we've used a paddle and, um, riding crops and pretty sure a flogger one time I was blindfolded and I'm not sure. So <laughs> but you, you end up with some bruises and yes and yeah um and probably blood even mm -hmm. um a little bit you know we're not um we don't go into like full blood play um but one thing that i really love is when he will use a knife on me and so it's not i'm not bleeding but obviously there are like scratches and and things like that and i really love that and that's one thing that i've found to be so rewarding and um, very like life changing for my self image is I have, well, first of all, I've never liked, I've never liked myself and I've also never liked my body. I've never been comfortable with my body. I, I don't like it and I don't even see the, like, why should I treat my body well? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you know, I've just never, I've never felt that I've never felt connected to my, my body. I've never felt at home in my body and receiving marks from sessions is the first time that I've ever felt beautiful. It's the first time that I've ever felt at home in myself. And it's the first time that I've been able to look at myself in the mirror and say, oh, Oh, there I am. There I am. Okay. And, and, and I, I imagine it might balance out some of that strength and backbone that you have to be publicly. Yeah. Or in your family <laughs> or at work or whatever. Yeah. And this privately kind of balances it out. Yes. Is that a good word? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And it's very, um, it's very centering. It's very calming and it can quiet my brain in a way that nothing else, nothing else does. Um, and one thing I spoke with about my, or spoke with to my friends quite a bit is, um, I have ADHD and I have a very, very loud brain all the time. And it sort of sounds like, um, it sort of sounds like when you're driving and you're sort of between like radio zones. So you've got one radio station and it's sort of picking up things from different radio station. And then there's also just static. And so you've got these, all of these ha trying to happen at once. And that's sort of what my brain sounds like all the time. Mm. Um, it's very loud and it's exhausting. Um, but especially in submission, all of that goes very quiet. It puts you at peace. Yeah. And it, I, I usually have to, you know, if I'm doing things around the house or if I'm doing things at work, I have to have like, you know, a show on in the background or music on in the background or something to like, you know, okay, I can listen to that so I don't have to listen to my head. And when I'm in a submissive headspace, I don't need it. 
I have never needed it. I don't need it. And I can be very, very peaceful and quiet. And it's, it's very, very centering. And it's just so nice to have that peace. And it's really a, it's really a gift. Absolutely. I see, I see my submission and being, being allowed to submit to my Dom is a gift that he gives me and that I give myself. And your Dom is your boyfriend? No, um, actually, no. Um, we are at this point, we are very, very close. We have a very intimate friendship, um, an intimate relationship, but um, no, he's not. He is actually uh, married and I'm, we've gotten extraordinarily lucky um, that I am extremely close friends with his wife now and I spend a lot of time with them outside of any dynamic play. Um, and we've, we've gotten, we uh, just all three of us have a very intimate friendship, intimate relationship, and it's, it's worked really beautifully for everybody. And I think it has been uniquely enhancing for everyone individually. And also, which is very important to me, it's enhancing for their marriage as well. Um, and that's something that I check in with both of them, but I actually check in with uh, my Dom's wife frequently just to make sure that everything feels transparent and open and she feels comfortable with everything. And it's really, really special. She's, she's absolutely one of my closest friends in the entire world. I would imagine that great communication is, is like <laughs> a, a, an absolute requirement in this. Yes. That it's, if there's any one universal rule for, but, I mean, kink for play life. or any kind of, <laughs> for, for life. life. Yes, for exactly. Life. But especially within kink and especially within any kind of, any form of non-monogamy, people can do it a million different ways. But the one universal truth is that you have to be a good communicator. You have to. And it's, that is what is going to make for a successful dynamic relationship, however you choose to move forward with it. But it applies to everything in life. Absolutely. Not, not just fetishes and things. Like yes, that. absolutely. And that's um, one thing that um, I'm, I'm not very good at, but my Dom is helping me and he'll sort of do a, he will gently push me into being a better communicator within, within the scope of saying, this is what I want. Um, because I think growing up, I was not really encouraged to have wants outside of the image that certain family members wanted to hold for me. And anything outside of that was way too much, way too much. And so I was just, okay, my survival mode was okay, fine. Don't do that. And just be who they need you to be and just get through it. And so now I, it's, it's difficult to have wants because they, I get very choked. They stop here and they, the words won't come out. So especially if it's a more emotional want, I can't, it doesn't come out. Um, and it has really, really helped to practice that kind of communication in a safe container within a dynamic or just within our relationship that we have with each other, just to say, this is what I really want. This is what I want to try. And this is extraordinarily vulnerable for me. And to create that safety involves a ton of communication and building a ton of trust, but being able to communicate the deepest and most vulnerable parts of yourself to someone and have that not only be you know, a, a received, but enthusiastically received and someone's excited to hear that part of you. So the difference that I've found 
in my like kink relationships, whether they're friendships or my dynamic with my dom, is that people don't like me in spite of these things. So, you know, they're, they don't say like, oh, well, you're a great person and, you know, you sort of like that and we'll sort of ignore that. But they like me because of those things and everything else about me just sort of supports the fact that I'm, I'm worthy of that kind of love that's not coming with conditions of, well, as long as you do this and as long as you adhere to this and as long as you're doing this. We start at what I thought was the most unlovable parts of myself and then go from there. And so having people say like, no, 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 that's really special and we love that about you um, has created a different type of relationship standard. And I use that in a broad term for friendships, for anything now, that that's where I need to start with people. And it's raised my mm -hmm. self-image and the respect that I have for myself as well. I love hearing that. It's like, I don't think you could achieve that with any pill or any even therapy, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, tried a lot of pills, tried a lot of therapy, and I still have those. And they're lovely, my little helpers. And I adore my therapist. Um, and what was a huge game changer actually was changing, um, switching therapists to a therapist who is um, a sexuality specialist, not only kink aware, but extremely kink informed. Um, and her, like that is her specialty. And she specializes in maybe your non-traditional relationships or non-traditional sexualities and things like that. And that was a huge game changer because I can go into therapy or with any of my friendships now, and I don't feel like I already have to justify or reassure anybody about anything. You know, I can just start with, well, yeah, this happened and I really loved it and not have someone be like, you did? Yeah. And I just have that being greeted with, like received and greeted with, oh, that's awesome. Tell me more. And I, that has really helped in my own self-acceptance and also in what I will and will not accept from others. So it's like you found a secret to to find your own like self-acceptance and, and self-worth even? Yes. I hacked it. And happiness. <laughs> you hacked it. I did it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think it was something that was missing for a very long time. Um, and, you know, part of that was just not being aware of all of it and learning more about kink in general and people in the lifestyle and non-monogamy in general for m myself. Um, but yeah, it has been extraordinarily freeing. And I, I say this to people a lot that, you know, I, I'm in a dynamic where we do use terms like ownership and I am owned and collared by my dom. But in that I've never felt more strength or freedom in myself ever. And just for the for people that are not inexperienced with this, this is only for these get togethers that you have with your dom. Yes. This, this is not throughout your day or anything like that. Right. You're, yes. not, you're not a full time slave or anything like no, that. No, no. So we don't we do not have a master slave dynamic. That's a That's different. that has different um, components to it and is more like twenty four seven and yeah. you know you similar know. but more yeah, there, there's definitely overlaps and similarities. Like I am, for me, it's not, it's not not 24 seven in that I am a sub all the time. I am his sub all the time. So, you know, even if we're, you know, all hanging out, having dinner totally outside you're, of- You're not living with him? No, no. Yeah. Um, but if, if we're all having dinner and we're sitting down and I start to get a little bit, you know, I'm doing a little jabs and sort of testing my limits there he knows that he can give me a look and I will behave. Does he behave the same way with his wife? 
Uh, no, they do not. They don't have a DS dynamic. Yeah. No. Interesting. What, what, would you, <laughs> what would you What would you say to someone who is is you know just vanilla as you call it, and is listening to this going, "Oh hell no, I'm not going to get. I'm not. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to let some guy hit me, beat me, flog me, whatever." That's that, you know just yeah, uh, that, that's, that's sick and twisted. What would you say to that? <laughs> um, that's abuse. That's well, yeah, and there are. I mean, first of all, if that's not if that's not your thing, it does not have to be your thing. So that's nice for you. Um, but it is really it is everything is consensual. That's a huge part. That's a huge part of how I approach everything and a foundational aspect of my dynamic. Everything is consensual. Um, and I had a friend say, you know, I think I would have trouble watching a session where, you know, a, he, I mean, you know, he's a very tall and strong man where he is doing that to a woman. Like I would have trouble watching that. And I said, I, yeah, I absolutely understand that, that I would probably, I think at the very beginning, I had trouble with that too, even it, even though it's what I wanted. I had trouble seeing it, but what's in, what's very reassuring for me is that everything, everything is consensual. We have safe words and he checks in on me multiple times throughout a session. If he feels like I'm being pushed too much or if I'm, <laughs> I'm pushing myself too much. Um, and everything is completely and enthusiastically consensual. And in those moments where I might look like I am being overpowered, I have never felt more powerful in my life. So it's interesting. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I do know, you know, there are different things for different people, but I am careful with who I share the extent of our sessions or my experience with people um just because you know there are some people who would see bruises or knife marks on someone and say do we need to call somebody for you and there are other people who go those are so beautiful and i have friends where you know well like well a bruise will start to form somewhere and i'll have a friend say like i can't wait to see how that blooms for you and i love that because I can't wait either because it like there's a change in colors and your skin changes and you just see these things in yourself that you're like, oh, I really am something else, which I which I really love. And it's not it's not for everybody. It's certainly not for everybody. And I would say that starting at a communication standpoint, yeah. but everything is. That's, that's why communication, I think, is so important, because there are a million forms that this can take. You're, yes. What you're describing is a pretty standard one, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say that we go to what some might call extremes. Um, I'm just personally, I'm not a latex or really intense leather person. Um, I love a nice collar, and that's all like very much like that. But that's not really where I gravitate, and. So I think, you know, outwardly, it looks sort of like anything else. Um, it's just a little spicier. How often do you engage in this? Um, more frequently now, I actually, um, I moved a few months ago and because the universe has a sense of humor, I ended up in an apartment that is about four minutes away from um, my Dom and his wife's house, so. How convenient. Yeah, yeah, it's so convenient. It's very convenient. Uh, so I'm, I mean, I just go over there to hang out with them a lot. And they've, they've come over. I accidentally adopted a cat. So they, they've been over several times to <laughs> meet the, meet my son. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, uh, it's, it's really fun. And so I, I would say, you know, we will have a, some kind of session um, 
once a week, maybe twice a week. The, the two of you or the three of you? Um, the two of us. Um, what I, what's really important for our, and by our, I mean all three of our communications is that um, everything is completely transparent with, um, between me and my Dom's wife, first of all. And so she has always been involved to a certain extent because her, even though she's not necessarily within like the kink lifestyle in terms of impact play or things like that, um, what makes her feel empowered is being asked for a session with him and being thanked afterward. And so she has always been involved to that extent um, from the very beginning. And that is, that is something that makes her feel really good and that is empowering for her personally and enhancing for their relationship with one another as well. That's a good example of how different strokes for different folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I think there, again, you, people approach it very different ways, but that was something that was said from, from the outset when um, my, I met my Dom um, and we met on, on FetLife. And so well, that was in, within maybe three messages. Well, in his first message, he said, you know, I'm married and this is kind of who I am. And um, I said, that sounds fantastic. And so that was always something that I was excited to do with her. I think the, both of us just got the incredible stroke of luck bonus that we get along extraordinarily well and we just like hanging out together. So we all, all three of us got very, very lucky in that respect. And one thing my Dom said to both her and I individually was, yeah, you guys are you guys are very similar. You're going to get along. I'm I'm making a huge mistake. I'm gonna I'm making a mistake and so we do laugh about that to this day where the two of us will sort of get on our schemes like you listen you knew this you knew this it's too late now it's too late so d does this uh arrangement have implications in your romantic life your your love life um does it get in the way of that or is it no um no it does not get in the way of that um first and foremost they are very supportive of me if i wanted to I mean, look just, for that just to be clear you are having sex with your dom yes okay yeah so does does the fact that you are having sex with a dom mm -hmm. affect if you like let's say you met a guy at work today mm -hmm. and he liked you and you're like yeah i, I can kind of <laughs> pursue this or, or just not waste that time and uh, go back to your dom next weekend? Um, so it's, it's interesting. So I, um, I was in a very long-term relationship, a very serious relationship um, that uh, ended about just over a year and a half ago. And so for me, romantic dating is a slower I'm I'm taking my time with it. So if something feels exciting and right, great. Um but it's certainly not something that I am chasing after right now. Um but that being said, you know, if if a something romantic came up for me, they would be the first two people who would be excited and encouraging of that. Um, for me and because they want they want that for me just as I want that for for their marriage and for them um, one thing moving forward that I know is that I will not have any relationships that are not uh, monogamy is not in my future so any connections that I make romantic or otherwise I make it very clear from the outset, you know, and I have, <laughs> I have dating profiles that I never go on because it's overwhelming and there's too many people. Um, but I have in my profile that I have a dom and it's a dynamic that I value and prioritize. And so I, I'm very upfront with that, with people. And so those who want to be in my life 
that I, that's what I come with. And over the last year and a half, two years, I've, I've had to reevaluate most of my friendships and relationships. And those who I've kept very close to me are my non-negotiables because they are, they've literally kept me alive. Um, and they've been an extraordinary support to me. So moving forward, I come with that. And I think those things don't make me any less lovable and they don't make me any less able to love someone. In fact, it helps me, it helps me love someone because I know that they know and love that about me and they are happy for me that I have that. May I ask how old you are? Yes. I, oh gosh. <laughs> I feel like with the past few years, you just sort of were like, I don't, I don't know. I am 32. 32? <laughs> yeah. Do you wish you had discovered this earlier in your life? Yes and yes and no. Yes, because I do feel sad for myself that for whatever reason, conscious or unconscious, I shut it down for such a long time. Um, but no, in that I don't think I would have been able to handle all of it very well in my 20s. I don't think I would have had, I know I would not have had the communication skills. And I think I, I think that would have complicated things in a way that I wouldn't have had time to really confront what jealousy means for me. And pardon me. Um, I've been able to look at jealousy differently where I don't feel it as kind of like a boiling, eating at me sort of way. I, it's, it's something that lets me know that I am feeling an insecurity. And if it's just an insecurity within myself, okay, I can address that and figure that out. If it's an insecurity within a partnership, I can communicate that to a partner and say, you know, I'm feeling insecure in this way and I need support. I did not have that then. And I would not have been able to communicate that well at all. Um, so yes and no, but I'm, I'm just happy that I have it now. This has been one of the most important the worst word in the world. This has been one of the most important journeys that I've ever been on, ever. And being gifted the freedom with my Dom to be everything that I want to be or want to try, all of that is held safely, which is lovely. <laughs> Maddie, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with this. Thank you. Hopefully it's helpful to somebody. I hope so. I Sounds hope like so. it's been helpful for you. Yeah, yeah. I would, hi, I'm biased, but highly recommend <laughs> if it's of interest. No, it's great to hear. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.